I have many fond memories of Martin Crow. Um, from the moment he arrived at uh, Somerset as uh, a young lad, I think he was 19, 20 years of age. Uh, he came over as a replacement for Viv, who was with the West Indies on tour. Uh, no one knew a great deal about Martin Crow at that stage, but uh, a few months later they certainly knew plenty in the Somerset area and over England. Uh, terrific talent. Um, I remember him arriving at uh, Taunton and I said to him, look, you're struggling for some accommodation at the moment. Come and stay with me. I've got a bunk nice little bungalow tucked away in a cul-de-sac that Viv and I use. Viv's away. Come and share it until you get yourself sorted which seemed uh, a very good idea. And then about uh, uh, I don't know, a week or so later, he receives a letter from his mum from New Zealand. Are you sure you should be staying there with him? <laughs> which I thought was... Uh, he never lived that... He never actually lived that down in the dressing room. He got a lot of stick about that for a long time. <laughs> so, so, so was his mum a bit worried about your undue influence? Uh, well, apparently, um, <laughs> but uh, it was, uh, it, as I say, it, it lived a long time, that story in the dressing room. Probably still lives there now. Sir Ian, he worked really hard, didn't he? Because he found cricket easier than life, I think, particularly as a young man. Is, is that true? Well, look, he, he's an extremely talented player. Uh, I, I, for one, don't think New Zealand used him enough uh, uh, in the cricketing circles. Um, I think he could have uh, added a lot more to the game, not just as a player, but I'm talking about after the game, he, he, after he'd finished as a player. Um, he loved the game of cricket. He thought the, thought the game of the cricket 24 hours a day. He was the guy, of course, who came up with, everyone thinks that uh, T20 is new. Uh, that's, I'm afraid, is baloney. I was playing it as a 14-year-old in the Somerset Leagues, and Martin Crowe then took, if you remember, Cricket Max, which was 10 overs, 10 overs, 10 overs, 10 overs. Uh, so um, four innings of a 20-over game. Uh, he was way ahead of his time. Um, Sadly, I don't think it was used enough, as I say, by New Zealand. But when he came to Somerset, he actually uh, uh, took a lot of the younger players under his wing. They, joined, they formed a club because he said, I'm here for the first time. You're all here as juniors. We'll have our own club. And they used to meet whenever, once a week, once every two weeks or three weeks at a little pub just outside the town. And they'd go there and they'd all have a team uh, dinner and uh, whatever. And uh, he bonded really well with the guys. And... Uh, they, they, people in Somerset have just fond memories of Martin Crow. Mm. Can you describe him as a batsman? Uh, I think one of the biggest compliments I can play to it, uh, pay him and, uh, and to say publicly without any hesitation whatsoever is that I think he's as elegant as Greg Chappell. He used his height, he stood up, uh, he played the ball. And many would argue he was better than uh, Greg Chappell. That's for the purists of the game to debate and argue. Greg Chappell played on a very good side. Martin Crowe played on a side where he had to dominate and uh, make his, as did Richard Hadley, had to make his presence uh, known and maybe had to do the job of two or three men. So it's something that you can, I'm sure people will argue about uh, in the bar over a bottle of wine or a couple of beers, who was the better, Chappell or um, Crowe? It's a pretty good debate, though, isn't it? And it's nice to be involved in it. And Martin Crow richly is in the mix. Did you keep in touch with him? Had you seen him in the last year or so? Well, I've been down to New Zealand a lot recently over the years. Uh, I'm down here again for the New Zealand Open, uh, which is going on behind me. Um, look, uh, I've been in and out a lot with England, with uh, the golf and my fishing, my big passion of fishing. And I always usually, you nearly always meet up with Hogan whether it was in, uh, of course, later days, more often than not in Auckland, because he was limited in his travel, he got tired. Uh, but uh, no, we had uh, dinner only, what, I don't know, a few months ago, six, seven months ago, uh, at his favourite little Italian round the corner. My wife, Kath, was over, and we all sat there, and he was very, very philosophical about it all. Uh, he just uh, fronted up and said, look, you know, this is the situation. I, I've given chemotherapy the flick. I don't think it's doing any good. He went on to natural uh, herbal remedies, and uh, at one stage, it looked as if he was winning, but these things have a case of coming back. Uh, and it, and uh, even though we all knew he was battling, when he finally passed away, it still comes as a shock.